It's my honor today to endorse Terry Gibson for re-election to the State Senate in the 41st Senatorial District uh, here in the Hudson Valley. First, as you know, I have made as my watchword uh, in my years in the Senate trying to help middle class families. The middle class is struggling in America. This is the first time in our history where median income has actually declined, which it has over the last 12 or 13 years. And that is very, very bad for residents of the Hudson Valley, which is a hardworking uh, community of the 40 in, and the 41st uh, district. In the city in which I live, there's a lady with a torch. And that torch symbolizes the American dream to all Americans and most citizens of the world. And if you ask the average American, what does the American dream mean? They'd say, they put it simply, not in professorial or fancy language. They'd simply say this, it means if I work hard, I'm going to be doing better 10 years from now than I'm doing today. And my kids will be doing better still. Well, when that torch flickers, when that dream dies, we have a different America. That's why this election is so important. It's important at the federal level. It's important at the state level. It's important at the local level. We have to elect candidates who know how to help the middle class. And Terry Gibson is just such a candidate. He comes from the middle class. His family worked really hard. And he is that way, too. He's not a fancy, highfalutin person. He knows what people need. And he's not going to be moved by ideologues who will say, vote against what the people like or need because so-and-so is telling you to do so for ideological reasons or campaign contribution reasons or whatever. He's a strong advocate of reforming Albany, of cleaning Albany up, which we really need in terms of uh, campaign finance reform. He's a strong advocate of the kinds of things we've been advocating in Washington, making it easier to kids to pay for college. College is so important to our kids, and yet it's harder and harder to afford. Terry will fight in Albany to reduce the costs that folks have. He's for increasing the minimum wage. It's just not fair. It's just not fair. We ask people to work hard. They work 40 hours a week and they can't get out of poverty. That's un-American. Terry will fight. He will fight for equal pay for women. A woman who does the same job as a man should get the same pay. Yes. All too often that doesn't happen. Terry's going to fight to make that happen. And, on, and we have worked closely together on a whole bunch of issues, particularly Lyme disease. Terry has done a great job, as has Didi, focusing on Lyme disease. And unfortunately, the Hudson Valley, Dutchess County, are the focal point of Lyme disease, not just in New York State, but in the country. But Terry's advocacy to get more funding, uh, more education, uh, more um, focus on Lyme disease is going to save lives here uh, in the Hudson Valley. And so I'm honored to support Terry. I think he'll be a great, great, great a uh, second-term senator, even better than the first-term senator he was, and that's a very high bar and a very high standard. And uh, look forward to continue to working with him on the issues that affect the Hudson Valley uh, and their middle-class families so deeply. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Terry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, a, it's a real honor to be endorsed by Senator Schumer. It's been a very much a privilege to stand with him to help make sure that those victims that are suffering with Lyme disease and other tick-borne illnesses um, have the help that they need and the money that we need to do the actual research so that we can find a cure for this. And I appreciate all the work that he's done on that. It's also great to uh, share his vision in building stronger families, stronger communities, making sure that our economy um, works for everyone, not just a limited few. And I just want to thank Senator Schumer for taking time out of his busy schedule to come here today and endorse my campaign. It means a lot, and I'm sure it will be uh, the way that we're going to go on to the path to victory. So thank you very much. Congratulations, thank Terry. You. Good job. Thank you. And now, let's see. Press, do you want to do questions of Terry and me, and then we'll do the Didi endorsement? Or do you want me to endorse Didi, and then we'll do questions of everybody? You guys tell me. Whichever you want. Well, since you guys are standing there. OK, we'll great. The we'll do the questions, you. yes. <laughs> Keep those signs coming, kids. <laughs> Uh, Senator Gibson, as you travel and you go door to door, as you're talking to folks, is it the economy, is it jobs that is still the number one priority issue with folks? Absolutely. Everyone that I talk to wants 
the Hudson River Valley to become a more affordable place to live and a more affordable place to do business. That's why I've always been committed to cutting taxes and not creating new ones and finding new creative ways to provide new high paying jobs here in the Hudson Valley. And I look forward to going back for a second term to continue that fight. Yeah, and I just agree with Terry, whether it's here in the Hudson Valley or anywhere in America, we have a whole lot of issues out there. We have Ebola and we have ISIS and we have so many other issues. But you ask the average family in Dutchess County and Hudson Valley, in any of these areas, uh, in uh, um, Columbia County or Ulster County, they will tell you jobs, and not just jobs, but good paying jobs. The average American still has a job. But for too many of them, the income they make is less than it was 10 years ago. That's really number one. What's number two? Well, you know, there are a lot of ancillary issues that face that. I would say education, making sure our schools are good, and making sure our kids can afford college. Uh, on that note, there's a, a lot of initiative to just do an outright repeal of Common Core. Uh, where do you stand on now, that? No, my view is standards are a good thing. We don't want to promote someone from the fourth to fifth grade if they're reading at a first grade level. We don't want to have a teacher in the classroom who doesn't serve to teach. But it's got to be done in a careful way. And the way it was done here in New York State, neither the educational leaders, you know, the superintendents, the teachers, or the parents were consulted. And so it just sort of was thrust down upon them and didn't really work. So they've got to go back to the drawing board and figure out how to do it. Echo those well, I, I took my cue on the Common Core from meeting with many, many teachers and students and parents here in the Hudson Valley and high school and middle school, elementary school administrators, and really wanted to get the inside scoop of what it was like to deal with the rollout of the Common Core. And it's been made very clear to me that while the goals of the Common Core are good and we should do everything we can to attain them, um, the way that we've gone about it is, is not fair to the students or the parents or the administrators or teachers. And so I do sponsor a bill that would put the Common Core on hold um, for three years while a blue ribbon panel of New York State educators are appointed to go back and take another look at how to do this in a better way. Okay, great. Now let's do Didi. And we're going to switch. Thank you.